Hey guys and welcome to another episode of Quick Expert Reviews. Today we've got the Nokia 2.4, the successor to the 2019 Nokia 2.3. So we've got a power button on the right, volume up, volume down, 3.5 millimeter jack on the very top, first microphone. We've got the Google Now button on the left side and the SIM tray. Now the SIM tray itself is a full-blown SIM tray, which means you've got two SIM cards and a memory card slot as well, which is always nice that you don't have to sacrifice a um, second SIM card for a memory card. So yeah, Google Now button, micro USB charging port on the bottom. Wow. <laughs> wow. Micro USB. Wow. That's old school. Um, okay, so let's have a look at what we are running on and see if it's anything better than the Nokia 5.4 I've uh, recently reviewed. And it actually is. So we've got Android 10 with the March 2021 security update and Nokia 5.4 weirdly enough was stuck on uh, October 2020. But yeah, it is what it is, as you can see. So we've got some nice gestures on the phone itself. So if you'd like, you can swipe the fingerprint if you can't reach um, the notification panel on the very top. So you can use that. The fingerprint sensor is located at the very back of the device. And then system navigation itself. So we've got either gesture navigation or free button navigation, which is the old school type of navigating the phone. Um, and it's always nice that they give you an option, so you're not forced to one. You can always revert back if you feel at home with the free bottom button buttons <laughs> on the bottom buttons on the bottom. Um, when it comes to security, we've got the face unlock, which is a bit temperamental. So as you can see, it's. I was trying to test how fast it unlocks the device, but literally nothing happens. It comes up with not recognized, and then again, same thing. So I was wondering, thinking maybe it's the glasses, maybe no glasses. So I've tried both ways, and mm, yeah, not 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 the best feature to be honest. Obviously, the fingerprint, sorry, the face recognition is slightly less secure than the fingerprint sensor, but. At least it's brilliant when it works. Let's try again then. No glasses, nothing. And oh, yep, it worked. Oh, okay, so it's working. Not anymore. <laughs> hey, okay, mm, interesting. Hello. <laughs> anything literally nothing wow okay brilliant uh maybe the fingerprint sensor is slightly better than let's try that let's let let me try the phone slightly closer to my face okay and <laughs> nothing brilliant yep the fingerprint sensor works um and it's 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 not the fastest but it does work so as you can see Touch two, two and a half seconds. Touch. Yeah. Oh my. Two, two and a half, three seconds. Wow. Yeah, it isn't, isn't the fastest. Hopefully, it's going to be fixed with a software update. Anyway, going back to the phone itself, we have 32 gigs of <laughs> 32 gigs of internal storage. Um, which is obviously expandable via memory card, as you've seen at the very beginning of the video. Sound enhancement brings best loudness, which basically um, allows you to play audio a bit louder. It doesn't really change much. Um, adaptive battery, so it decides for you when to close the apps and when to keep them. And when it comes to connectivity, there is no NFC, so you can unfortunately forget about Google Pay um, or anything like that. Considering the phone is around £99, it's not the best, but yeah, unfortunately, there are phones that are also around £99 and they do have NFC. Okay, um, so 
let's have a look. What have we got in here? As it is with the Nokia phones, not much stuff comes pre-installed, um, apart from Nokia very own app, which has a manual. So let's focus on the camera. So camera itself, we've got a 13 megapixel f-stop 2.2 sensor, and then we've got the 2 megapixel depth sensor um, for the portrait pictures. And to be honest, the portrait pictures do look really nice. Um, as usual with my videos, you've got the picture samples at the very end of the review. Um, when it comes to settings, features and so on, you've got the shutter sound, which you can turn off, grid. Um, you can choose where you want to store the pictures, memory card or the phone internal st um, um, storage. Or you've got the HDR, you've got the watermark. So if you'd like to, you can set it up to your own liking. Um, you can type whatever you'd like and every single photo will have a watermark on it out of the box which is always nice if you're thinking about, for example, taking pictures for your blog or something like that, because the camera actually is pretty decent, not like the face um, recognition and locking <laughs> mechanism on the phone, so, well, software. When it comes to f video, you've got 1080p at 30 frames per second for both front-facing and rear-facing camera. And then when we go to video itself, there are no additional settings. Um, so the rear facing, like I've mentioned, 13 megapixels, the front facing 5 megapixels, f-stop 2.4. Okay, let's listen to the actual audio of the device. Okay, so we are done with audio and the picture quality. Let's have a look at the actual internal um, setup. So compared to the Nokia 2.3, we've got the MediaTek P22 rather than A22 in the 2.3, Nokia 2.3. However, it's still a quad core, um, two gigahertz CPU. You've got the same GPU as well. Um, so it's even made in the same process, which is 12 nanometers. Um, so there isn't that much difference between the 2.3 and 2.4 when it comes to um, processing speed or the actual performance. But as you can see, Minecraft actually runs quite well, uh, which is surprising, which was surprising for me. So... This model has 32 gigs of internal storage, like I've mentioned, which means it comes with 2 gigs of RAM. If you go for the 64 gigs, you've got 3 gigabytes of RAM. Um, and as I've mentioned, gaming performance isn't that bad. After Minecraft, we're going to try Call of Duty Mobile. Because I like the difference between the two games. So one is quite GPU intensive, which is Call of Duty Mobile. And the other one is quite CPU intensive, which is Minecraft. And to be honest, for £99 with the Helio P22 CPU and the actual processor on the device, you can't really complain. It works pretty well. Considering you've got a slightly bigger screen as well versus the predecessor, because the Nokia 2.3 was 6.2 and this is 6.5 inch, 
which is exactly the same size as, for example, iPhone 11 Pro Max, um, then it does actually run pretty well. Let's try that. Happy days, two kills. So that's that. And last but not least, we're going to try Stadia. Now, as you've potentially seen, if you've seen any of my previous videos, Nokia phones, for some very odd reason, tend to struggle with Stadia. Um, there is quite a noticeable a lag in uh, Stadia games when played on Nokia phones. I didn't have that issue with the Poco X3. I didn't have that issue with the Galaxy Note 9, for example, which is like, what, three years old now? But for some weird reason, Nokia phones tends to have either weak Wi-Fi antenna or there is something else going on um, with the phone itself. And to be honest, with the 45 milliampere hour battery, uh, 4500 milliampere hour battery, um, the phone does actually last two days. So it doesn't matter if you play on Stadia or if you, um, you know, listen to music or don't do as much demanding tasks as usual. You can easily expect two days uh, and screen on off screen on time of around five hours. Um, so I have to admit, pretty decent especially when you um, look at the um, the actual price of the handset. And it also supports USB on the go, USB OTG. So, yeah, thanks for watching another episode of Quick Expert Reviews, and I'll speak to you soon, guys. Bye!